I lived for a while in an Ohio town that wasn't far away from Wheeling, West Virginia. This was quite a long time ago, mind you, and I was only there for about a year. I'm having a really hard time trying to actually remember the name of it. I suppose that's not too important, though. What is important is that I was 13 years old at the time. I had an older brother and a younger sister as well. I really didn't like being around my parents at that time. I was really happy during the summer of that year when I got to stay for about a month at my aunt's house. She lived way out in the country, as my family always put it, although I always thought that sounded a bit weird. I mean, technically, doesn't everyone live in their country? I guess I didn't really understand. This was back in the 1980s, so there wasn't as much readily available entertainment as there is today. We would get to have a frozen pizza every Friday and have to go into town to rent some videos. We would always opt for cheesy 80s horror movies and stay up really late. I saw a lot of VHS horror that summer, but for the rest of the days we would have to make our own entertainment. It was particularly hot inside that day. My aunt only had a couple of fans and they weren't doing their best. My aunt only had a couple of fans to cool the place down and they weren't exactly doing the best job that day. There was a slight breeze outside and it was actually much cooler to just go out there and play around. We decided to go for a bit of a walk. The road my aunt lived on was paved with gravel. She lived in this very beautiful rural area with very few homes around. The road was actually a pleasant walk during the summer. It was at the bottom of many hills which had tons of shading trees upon them. At this time of day, they were casting their shadow across the road, making it the coolest place my cousin and I could be at the time. We were walking for a while, and as I mentioned before, there was a cool and consistent breeze this day. I would say the wind was at about 16 miles per hour maybe. We were having a jolly old time, just talking about some things going on in our lives. All of a sudden though, my cousin stopped walking and he got this very odd look upon his face. He looked off into the distance, in the trees on the hill. I asked him if something was wrong. He took a moment and then responded, I don't know. I thought I just heard something, but I guess I can't be sure. He sort of narrowed his eyes, as if he was searching for something up on that hill. After a moment, though, he just shook his head. The two of us began to walk again. It was Friday afternoon, and once my aunt got home from work, we were going to go and pick up our videos for the night. We were discussing what we were going to rent. I very distinctly remember him mentioning wanting to watch The Monster Squad, that wasn't really a horror movie at all, though. We both heard the same noise coming from the trees just then. It was not just the sound of footfalls crunching upon the leaves, but we could also hear someone who sounded like they were breathing quite heavily. Finally, we saw something accompanying this sound as well. Just 20 feet ahead of us, someone suddenly burst out of the trees. A man much bigger and older than either of us, dressed in all shabby clothing, I remember clearly he was wearing a denim jacket and what looked to be a baseball cap as well. That was not what stood out most about this man though. The man was covered in blood. He also seemed panicked and shocked to see us when he looked over to us. I could understand why. There was a lot of forest around here and not a lot of people. Running out onto this road more often than not you would be all alone. The man seemed unsure of what to do and just stared us down for a moment. We were frozen in place, also not sure what to do. The man then moved forward as if he was going to rush at us. He quickly stopped himself though. He seemed to rethink his choice for a moment. Instead, he turned and ran off in the other direction. We didn't follow him, of course, as the two of us were already scared enough. Remember, we had been watching a lot of scary movies that summer, and this seemed like a scene right out of one of them. The last thing we needed to do was follow someone who might be crazy, dangerous, or both. My cousin even thought that maybe that guy had just killed someone out in the woods. He suggested we should go and see if someone was out there. 
If the man really had attacked someone and that someone was still alive, then it wouldn't be good to just walk away, now would it? I agreed. And besides, we were two 13-year-old boys. We should be able to handle ourselves. We cautiously started up the hill in the area we had seen the madman run down from. I would like to tell you I was being brave as hell, but honestly, I was terrified the entire time. I kept expecting the guy to loop back around and ambush us from behind or something. When we got to the top of the hill and were making our way down to the other side, we hoped to find something. Eventually, we did find something, but it completely changed what we had perceived had happened. There was a creek not too far from where we were, and we could see a huge man hanging over it. His back was turned towards us, but we could tell what he was doing. He had this large knife and was wiping it off in the creek water. We didn't have to say anything to each other. We both realized what we were seeing and what had actually happened. We also realized we might be in some big trouble right now. As quiet as we could, we crept behind two trees. Still curious though, the two of us kept looking out from behind the tree at the man by the creek. We were very fortunate he didn't appear to notice us. After the guy had cleaned his knife off of all the blood and dried it off, he sheathed it once more. Then he took off in the opposite direction of us. I breathed a silent sigh of relief because this guy was even bigger and scarier looking than the guy we had seen running out onto the road. Once this guy was gone, we still waited for a while before heading back down the hill. We had seen enough scary movies to know you can never know if the killer would come back at any moment. We didn't feel safe until we got back down to the road. Once we did, we hurried back to my aunt's house. We told them what we had seen, and strangely enough, they didn't seem to be very concerned at all. They still slept with the house unlocked as they always did, and I never really found out what happened in that situation. I did know it was much scarier than any of the movies that we watched though. My grandma and grandpa lived in a very old house. I think it used to be a one-room schoolhouse way back in the day. They put up walls and there was an upstairs sort of attic that was a living quarters, I guess. My grandpa himself built a sort of addition onto the back of the house. That addition was really flimsy though. It was literally just built with boards. There was no outside siding, no insulation, no drywall on the inside. It did have a window that faced into the backyard though. The reason I'm telling you about this particular room is that whenever we took the trip to Grandma and Grandpa's house, that was always the room I slept in. I have to admit as well, it was a very freaky place to sleep. The house was in the opening to a holler. When you looked back through the window, you were looking into a beautiful countryside, but at nighttime it transformed into a dark and frightening scene. Of course, there were no lights at this part of the house at all, and when you were in the room itself, your eyes would get quite used to the dark. When they did, you could see things back there in shadowy movements, tree branches going back and forth, animals out in the wild. This happened in winter, when I was 15 years old. My family drove to Grandma's house, and we got there a couple of hours before bedtime. That was what we normally did. We would watch Jeopardy, eat dinner, and go to bed not long after. One thing I remember about this is that when my grandpa got up to do something at one point, I began to rock his chair back and forth with my foot. This was a big no-no with my very superstitious grandparents. They had this weird fixation that if you rocked an empty chair in the house, it would cause someone to die soon. My grandma looked quite worried, and the look on her face told me I should stop doing this immediately. All my life, I'd been the type to stay up late at night, and then sleep in late in the morning. I really liked being up at night, actually. My mind seemed to work better when I was up in the nighttime hours. I went to that room when everyone else went to bed, but I didn't go to sleep right away. Instead, I stayed up for a while reading a book, with the not-so-bright lamp in the back room. It was a pretty cold night out, but that didn't really bother me. 
The bed in the back room had some heavy quilts on it in order to keep warm. There was also an old space heater I could use if it got too cold for me, but those occasions were very rare. There's just something nice, you know, about laying down in the cold weather, warmed up by tons of blankets. I even remember the book I was reading that night, Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. You know, I don't normally get scared by books, but this one was really scary. I had to admit I was already a little bit spooked out every time I was in that room. If I didn't want to enjoy the ambiance, though, I guess I wouldn't have been reading a scary book to begin with. As I read on, I would occasionally look up and out the window for a moment. The darkness added to the fear I was feeling from that book. I'm not sure how long I stayed up reading. If you've ever read that book before, I think you'd understand why, though. While I'm not the biggest fan of King's work, there's something about the atmosphere of this particular book that really pulled me in. Finally, though, I was exhausted. I was thoroughly on edge and ready to go to sleep. The lamp was right by the bed. Once I turned it off, everything was totally dark for a while. I knew I wouldn't be able to fall asleep right away. That's just not what I do. Instead, I laid down and looked out the window, and just kind of ruminated in my nighttime thoughts for a while. Eventually, I did doze off. Since I was asleep somewhere other than my own bed, though, I tended to sleep in little blocks, you know? Wake up for a few moments, go to sleep over again, wake up, fall back asleep. I was sleeping facing the window, so the first time I woke up, I just looked out into the darkness. I could see a little bit better than before, and I could see the branches of several trees swinging in the wind. After looking at them swaying hypnotically for a few moments, I swiftly went back to sleep. The next time I woke up, it was pretty much the same thing. I saw some swinging branches and fell back asleep. I'm not sure how many times I repeated this, until the moment I woke up and looked out the window once more. This time, in addition to the swaying trees, I saw something out the window. A dark something but I could tell it was looking in through the window at me. It took my sleepy mind a few moments to realize that I was not dreaming this. All of a sudden, I noticed what looked like a hand reach out from the side of the window and begin to tap on the glass. I heard the tapping distinctly, and I could make out the hand's prints very clearly. I jumped up and out of the bed in shock. I had to do everything I could not to yell out in fear, my impulse was to rush away from the window and out the room, but I resisted that, looking back to the window. Now, there was nothing there. I walked over cautiously and peeked out, trying to see if someone was out there or if they were running away into the darkness or something like that, but I didn't see anyone there. It was pitch black. I could hear the trees howling in the wind, but I couldn't make out the figure anymore. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if I was still sleeping and had just dreamed the entire thing, or if someone was skulking outside my room. It took me a long time before I was able to go back to sleep. I told my family about this the next day. My grandma told me something about never rocking the chair without someone sitting in it, suggested perhaps some demon had come for me or something. That's pretty ridiculous. It did get me thinking, though, that maybe my grandpa had done it to teach me some respect about their beliefs or something. If he did, he never admitted to it. I wouldn't have put it past them, but maybe someone really was just skulking out my room that night. This is the story of the strangest thing that ever happened to me in my life. At the time, I lived in the suburbs of Chicago. I had just gotten my heart broken not long before this and was trying to get back into the dating scene if I could. I was quite lonely and I went for trying to meet someone online. I began to speak with a man named Robbie. He was a bit younger than me, which wasn't something I really liked. I was in my late 20s and he was exactly 20 years old and still lived at home with his parents. He wasn't going to community college at the time, either. I would normally have dismissed him because of this, but he was very persistent talking to me, and he seemed to be an interesting person regardless. 
He liked horror just as much as I did, so that got me interested in the very least trying to meet him. He lived in Wisconsin, but he lived in the rural part of the county. I didn't have a GPS, and this was before smartphones as well, so I had quite a bit of trouble finding his place. Eventually, I was able to find him though, and picked him up. I should mention that all I wanted to do was go and have dinner and talk, get to know each other a little bit. We were getting along very well. He hadn't seen nearly as many movies as I had, and by talking a lot about them, he asked if I wanted to go buy some maybe, go back to his house and watch them together. I was a bit hesitant because he lived with his parents. You probably figured out by now that I'm a gay guy, which I guess I should have mentioned first. I felt really uncomfortable going back with his parents still there. Especially when he told me they didn't even know he was gay. They weren't gay positive at all either. He told me he would tell them that I was just a friend passing through who needed a place to sleep and couldn't afford a hotel. He told me the many things he would tell his parents as lies. You know, this should have been like a thousand red flags at once, give or take. I was extremely uncomfortable with all of this, but I was on the rebound and Robbie seemed like a likable guy. Despite my apprehension, I decided, why not give it one try? We bought a couple of movies. I don't really recall all of them other than that one was a remake of the movie House of Wax, I think. I mostly only remember that as well because of the weird shit that happened while we were watching it. After shopping, we drove out to his house again. As I mentioned before, he lived in a very rural part of the county. His house was very old and sat on what I supposed used to be an old farm that was no longer tended to. The fact his house was so isolated made me feel really weird. Things were even stranger when I met his parents. I could tell right away something was off about them, and they didn't seem to like me either. I don't remember much about the father, but the mother was very overbearing. I could tell right away that if they didn't know their son was gay, they at least suspected it very strongly, and they were very, very angry about it. While we were watching the movie, I was sitting in a recliner that was in the middle of the living room. We had the lights off, of course, because it was a horror movie. Although the parents had said they were going to go to bed, there were times when I could hear something shuffling and sneaking behind me. I would turn around, only to see the mother peeking around the corner of the dark hallway, watching me. She would linger there for a moment, before seeing I'd noticed her and sprinting around the corner. Her absences would never last long, though. She would creep back through the darkness of the hallway and hide and keep watching me. There was one very scary moment. We were watching that House of Wax movie, only for me to turn around and notice her hiding in a doorway again, this time holding a knife in her hand. She held the handle with one hand and was lightly slapping the flat part of the blade with her other. I certainly knew she was not doing anything in the kitchen at the moment. It was even more scary because I knew she knew I'd keep looking back and catching her there. This was something she wanted me to see. I really should have left right then and there, but Robbie didn't seem to think anything was going on. For some reason, the idiot in me decided not to leave. Robbie told his mom we were going to go to sleep. He showed her he'd made up a bed on the floor of his room for me to sleep on. Then he closed the door. He waited until she was gone in order to lock it. I laid down on the floor, not really knowing what was going on here. Robbie asked me to come up to the bed to cuddle with him. I liked him a lot, but I'm sure everyone listening to this story can realize how blind I must have been by this point. I guess I really, really liked him. I should have never gotten into this position. Needless to say, I didn't sleep so well. There were several times throughout the night I could hear the doorknob being turned and scraped against. I knew that was dear old mom checking to see if the door was locked. She was probably trying to open the door as well, to see if anything particularly gay was going on. This happened no less than five times. Each time it did, all I could think about was her standing there in the darkness with a knife in her hand. Somehow I managed to survive the night. The way his mother had acted didn't seem to bother Robbie at all either. He went through the entire experience as if nothing had ever happened. 
He was also completely oblivious to the fact his mom knew he was gay and was willing to try and scare his date with a knife in order to keep him from being so. I left the house as soon as possible to avoid encountering mom again. Not long after, I got a call from Robbie. His mom told him I wasn't allowed to come back, and he was really confused. Didn't matter much to me. I wouldn't have gone back there if he paid me. Strangely enough, not long after, Robbie decided he didn't really feel like being gay anymore. Last I knew of him, he was dating some girl in his church group. I really hope his mom didn't threaten him or something like that. The whole thing was way too weird and scary, and I was happy to never have to meet any of these people again. Like an idiot though, a while later I looked him up on Facebook, and to my surprise, I found him. Honestly, what I found is pretty disturbing though. It seems like he went through periods of acceptance, then suppressed them again. Eventually, he even started to support conversion therapy and believing that being gay can be cured. Having one's true identity suppressed can be the scariest thing of all. This was clearly a kid who was severely brainwashed and didn't have the slightest clue of what was going on. That's pretty scary. While out one night, I ran into a guy who was a really good friend of one of my ex-boyfriends. We hung out a bit that night, but there wasn't really any flirtation or anything between us. My ride wanted to go home, but I wasn't quite ready to leave myself. The guy said he would bring me home when the club closed in an hour. I had hung out with this guy many, many times before and never felt anything was wrong with him. I was not anticipating what would happen this night. We got into his car like usual and started on the way home. We got on the interstate, only for him to miss my exit. I told him he just missed the pass, and he told me, Yeah, I know, we're going to my place. In this moment, I knew something was off. I told him it was too late, I really just wanted to get home. He kept insisting I sleep over at his house and was not going to take no for an answer. I had never planned to visit that place in my entire life, but still I decided to play it cool. Maybe I could just crash on the sofa and make him take me home first thing in the morning. We get to his apartment, walk into the door, it's a bedroom. Apparently he lived in a studio apartment, so it was one big room with a bathroom and that was it. No sofa, just a single bed. He walked in first. He closed the door behind me and immediately turned the lights off. I couldn't see a single thing. He must have blacked out the windows because it was pitch black inside. He grabbed me and threw me against the bed. I was completely freaking out at this point. It was immediately clear he had no intentions of just letting me go to sleep. He kept on trying to touch me, kiss me, get me to cuddle up next to him. I kept thinking that if my ex knew what he was doing right now, he'd be very pissed. I tried to push him off, only for him to try again. Somehow, this went on for about an hour. I just wanted this night to be over. I knew I needed to do something, because he was a built man, and I was just a petite young woman. I didn't know how long I could defend myself from his assault. I couldn't even see my hand in front of my face either. I pushed him off once more got up, and walked until I found a wall. Luckily, he wasn't able to see me either. I was able to feel around for the bathroom door handle. I went into the bathroom and closed the door behind me. I didn't know what my next move should be. Unfortunately, this was before cell phones, so I couldn't call anyone for a ride. All of a sudden, he shoved the door against my back and managed to fling it open. Then he told me to get the fuck out and that he was bringing me home. He was steaming mad, too. I ran out of the apartment. I got into the car and he didn't say a single word the entire way. He brought me home without a word said between us. I knew I'd just dodged a serious bullet, but I had no clue how serious it could have been until years later. This guy eventually went on to rear his girlfriend's five-year-old daughter so severely she had to have reconstructive surgery. He pleaded guilty and is now in prison for a long, long time. <laughs> 